कुंज बिहारी जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन बाेरी बार गोपी जन बाेरी बार यशोदनंदजन रंजन यशोदनंदजन रंजन यशोदनंदन राजजान रंजन यमो नीरा वनशे यमुना चीरा वन चे जयरा माधवा कुंज बेहारे जय राध माधव कुंज बेहारे जय राध माधव कुंज बेहारे गोपी चंद पल्लबेरे बार जसोर नंदन भजगंद रामोन तीर जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राध माधव कुंज जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारे जय ओम विष्णु पार परमहंस हरिभाजगचार्य अष्टोठा सर श्री श्री भक्तिवेदांत स्वामी श्री प्रभुपाद की अनंत कोठ वैष्णविंद की नाम आचार्य श्री हरिदास ठाकुर की 
प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निचानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासरी गौरभक्त वृंद की श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंड राध कुंड गिरि गोवदान की श्री वृंदावन धाम की श्री मायापुर धाम की गंगमय की यमुन मय की तुलासी देव की भक्ति देव की समवेत भक्त वृंद की हरिनाम संकीर्तनम की बृहत्मदंग की श्री प्रभाद की श्री श्री गोनिथाय की श्री श्री कृष्ण बाल राम की श्री श्री वार श्याम सुंदर ललित विशाख देवेश की जय श्री वृंदावन धाम की गंठराज श्रीमद भागवताम की जय गौर प्रेम नंदी ओ ग्लोरियस्ट द असेंबो देवोटीस ओ ग्लोरियस्ट द असेंबो देवोटीस ओ ग्लोरियस्ट द असेंबो देवोटीस ओ ग्लोरियस्ट श्री गुरु गुरांग ओ ग्लोरियस्ट श्री प्रभुपाद नम ओम विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमाते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नमने नमस्ते सरस्वते देवे गौरवाणी विचारिणे निर्वशेष सन्यवादी भस्तचारे शिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभून चनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासदी गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओम नमो भागवते वासुदेवा नमो भगवते वासुदेवा ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवा हरे कृष्ण This morning we're reading from the Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto Ten, Chapter Thirty-Three, Text Number Four. Is on? Is that on the screen? Four, five, five. Okay, let's open on four. Okay, number five. Text five to seven. So one verse number four is on the screen, which is. Sorry, <laughs> the marker is on four. So text five. Okay, so we're reading from text number five until seven. Is that right? Okay. Kindly repeat. Vayanam nupuranam kinkininam. च योषिताम स प्रियानाम अबुद्ध शब्दः तुमुलः रसमंडले वलयानाम नरुपानाम वलयानाम नुपुरानाम किंकिनाचयोषिता स प्रियानाबुचमलासमंडले वलयाना पुराण किंकिनाचयोषिता सफियानाबुशब्दस्मलासमंडले वलयानापुराण किंकिनाषिता 
Sapriya nam bhushchabdas Tumalora samandale Balaya nam nupura nam Kinki ni nam chayoshitam Sapriya nam bhushchabdas Tumalora samandale Puranam Kinki Ninam Chayoshitam Ninam Abuchabdas Tumulora Samandale Tumulora Samandale Kini nam chayoshitam Sapriya nam abhuchabdas Tumalora samandale Halaya nam napura nam Kini nam chayoshitam Sapriya nam abhushabdas Tumalora samandale Anybody else? Very enthusiastic this morning to chant the verse. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Always. Always, yeah. Usually there's a few more devotees repeating the, the, the verse. No problem. Hear you. Don't hear me, that's for sure. We'll go on to uh, the, trans uh, the word for word and then the translation. Valayanam of the armlets. Nupuranam ankle bells. Kinkininam bells worn around the waist. Cha. And, and Yoshitam, Yoshitam of the women, women. Sapriyanam who, who were with their beloved. A boot there, there was, Shabdaha, Shabdaha. A, sound. a sound, Tumulaha, Tumulaha. tumultuous, tumultuous. Rasamandale, Rasa in the circle of the Rasa dance. The Rasa Translation is no purport. A tumultuous sound arose from the armlets, ankle bells, and waist bells of the gopis as they sported with their beloved Krishna in the circle of the rasa dance. No purport. Text number six. Tatradi shu shube tabir. Bhagavan Deva ki suttaha Madhye mani nam hai manang Maha marakato yata Translation and purport I don't know if it, does it come on the screen? This is a great uh, introduction I, I mean for decades we had the uh, chalkboard and now you've got this marvelous Translation, in the midst of the dancing gopis, Lord Krishna appeared most brilliant, like an exquisite sapphire, in the midst of golden ornaments. What do you call that? Is that a metaphor? What's the word for that? Wonderful. Wonderful, for sure. <laughs> it's a wonderful... Uh, I don't know what you call it metaphor, I'm not very good at those type of words. But it's a wonderful description, that's for sure. Next, but it falls way short, you could say, of the actual situation. Something we can relate to. Purport. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur states that Devaki, 
besides being the name of Vasudeva's wife, is also a name of Mother Yashoda, as stated in the Adi Purana. Dvenam Ninanda Bhaya Yasoda Deva Kiticha. The wife of Nanda has two names, Yashoda and Devaki. End of purport. So we go on to text number seven, which is a little bit longer purport. It's a very long verse, and I think we'll leave the verse out. We'll just go straight on to the English. Translation, as the gopis sang in praise of Krishna, their feet danced, their hands gestured, and their eyebrows moved with playful smiles. With their braids and belts tied tight, their waists bending, their faces perspiring, the garments on their breasts moving this way and that, and their earrings swinging on their cheeks, Lord Krishna's young consorts shone like streaks of lightning in a mass of clouds. Whew. Quite a verse, huh? A lot to digest. Just no digestion, okay. <laughs> No imitator, huh? no imitation. <laughs> Purport. Srila Sridhar Swami explains that according to the analogy of lightning flashing in clouds. More into the mic? They can't hear, okay. It sounds very loud here, it's funny. Huh? No, I understand. It's difficult to tell. Is that, is that better? Yeah. Is it better? Yeah. Much better. Yeah. Okay. You're good. Good. Wonderful. <coughs> Srila Sridhar Swami explains that according to the analogy of lightning flashing in clouds, the perspiration on the lovely faces of the gopis resembled drops of mist and their singing resembled thunder. The word agrantayaha may also be read agrantayaha meaning loosened. This would indicate that although the gopis began the dance with their hair and belts tightly drawn, these gradually slackened and loosened. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti points out that the gopis were expert at exhibiting mudras, precise hand gestures that express feelings or convey meanings associated with the theme of a performance. Thus, sometimes Krishna and the gopis would artistically move their interlocked arms together and sometimes they would separate arms and exhibit mudras to act out the meaning of the songs they were singing. The word pada nyasai indicates that the gopis artistically and gracefully place the steps of their dancing feet in an enchanting way and the words sa smitarir bru indicate that the romantic movements of their eyebrows smiling with love were most charming to behold om jnana timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshoran Militam Yena Tasma He Shri Gurave Nama Shri Chaitanya Manobistam Tapitam Yena Bhutale Shvayam Rupa Kadamayam 
Tadati Svabhadantikam Hare Krishna So, Panchagoda Prabhu, Yavi Chandramaj, all the assembled Vaishnavas, Prithu Prabhu, Sruti Kirti and many other senior Vaishnavas here today and Vaishnavis, Mandakini and many others, please bear with us. We'll try to, let's say, share some words and we hope that these words will inspire us on our path of devotional service with your blessings and your kindness. Um, I'd like to read a few more things um, related. Generally speaking, we, we're all familiar with the fact that Srila Prabhupada didn't delve. We're in an audience today with many devotees who are at different levels of progress in Krishna consciousness. Some have been in the movement for 50 to 55 years, chanting the holy names, following strictly. Some are new to Krishna consciousness. Some of us have had our ups and downs. We're seeing the world through our various conditionings. We have our different, let's say, perspectives on things sometimes. So, Srila Prabhupada Jalni, especially on this subject, not just Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, Srila Prabhupada, but also Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, rarely, only with a few very, very confidential followers, three and a half confidential followers, did Lord Chaitanya generally delve deeply into these subject matters. We can hear them. Srila Prabhupada gave us the Krishna book, practically speaking, one of the first books in our movement. Huh? Was it 1970, I think, wasn't it? I think so. Very early on, it was the very first book I ever, ever managed to buy. And we're reading it. And by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, it's so ecstatic and so uh, in, full of life and meaning. This is the most confidential subject matter of the Vedas. And here we are, drug-taking hippies or something, reading the Krishna book. It's quite incredible. And becoming attracted and inspired somehow, maybe with no real understanding, but the effect of the pure devotee's deliverance there. But in general, aside from that, the same with the nectar of devotion. I know many devotees, they read 19 chapters of the Nectar of Devotion and start again. But that wasn't in when we were in early years in Bury Place in London, we would read the whole Nectar of Devotion. We didn't understand it. What did we know? Maybe some a little bit, but transcendental activities, all the various Rasas, rasabas, ecstatic symptoms, and so on. We would just read it. These are given to us by the pure devotee of the Lord. And by hearing his words, we become purified and eligible, step by step, if we follow the process, to actually be able to progress towards that stage of realization or understanding. Yes, we would all sit every day and read Nectar of Devotion in the temple together. All the chapters, not all at once, but systematically. Prabhupada wanted this. We may not understand it, we certainly can't imitate it. We may not be able to delve into it. We have, we're still conditioned souls. But by hearing it from the proper source, we become purified. So I'd like to read something now from Srila Prabhupada. And that's one of the reasons we, even if we have that realization, in the, a mixed assembly, these subject matters are not, generally speaking, dealt in depth. We're more concerned with the process of eligibility. 
or becoming qualified step by step at each stage of our progress in spiritual life there will be a you could say a different subject matter which is very relevant maybe different activities a different degree of execution of sadhana different types of association as we gradually progress one will naturally become inclined but as Prabhupada says in the Nectar of Devotion that these subject matters for those who are still affected by the modes of nature for those who have any inkling of sex desire this is not the time these subject matters should not be delved deeply into at this stage when one is purified it becomes a natural Evolvement. So we're going to read from Srila Prabhupada now. This is March the 14th, a little bit a week ago, March the 14th, 1974. So we're going back almost 50 years ago when Srila Prabhupada was here in Vrindavan. I don't know if anyone was here. Were you Shruti Kirti with Prabhupada in 74? No? In Vrindavan? You may well have been present during this lecture. Here in this temple, Srila Prabhupada lectured. So we can say about this verse, or these verses, this section of the Bhagavatam, it is obviously the highest goal, and in what we could say, our objective goal of our acharyas, and that's our future kind of goal or hope. Prabhupada even expressed that, that one day you will be dancing with Krishna a little time away um, so it's our goal the goal of our lives it's not just the goal of life as we've been hearing um, on various morning classes it's not really just our goal of life to be there our, what our goal of life is to develop or awaken the, the mood of pure devotional service the mood of those devotees one thing which stands out in these um, verses and this subject matter here is that everything, whatever it is, how they decorate their bodies, how they dance, the mudras which they show, everything, the movements of their eyes, everything is simply to bring pleasure, pleasure to Krishna. And this is the actual principle of devotional service. It may start off with doing what our condition situation tends to you know veer towards but ultimately when we become purified of our conditioning ultimately it's the soul's natural constitution to exist wholly and solely for the pleasure of Krishna and basically that's what we're practicing by accepting direction from a pure devotee of the Lord we're learning how to exist for the pleasure of Krishna and not just how I like it there's a lot of how I like it still or how I feel how I want and so on is still there but the process if followed properly will help to free us from this uh, covering or this um, illusion and to realize our real business and these pastimes demonstrate to the fullest extent um, the uh, situation of the pure devotees that they only want to bring pleasure to Krishna they have no concern about their own pleasure as such that comes automatically because Krishna simply wants to please his pure devotees so Prabhupada talks here about what real love is real love is to love Krishna that is the highest philosophy of life the highest perfection of life how to learn to love Krishna Vrindavan means simply loving Krishna so if you're wondering what Vrindavan is Prabhupada tells quite simply here what love or what Vrindavan is it simply means to love Krishna that's what Vrindavan means it's not and Prabhupada goes on then to say the coward boys the gopis Nanda Maharaj, Yasoda Mai, Radharani, their only focus is to love Krishna. And when you really love somebody, it means all you're thinking of is their welfare. What brings pleasure to them, irrelevant of what the reaction is to ourselves. 
That's all. That is Vrindavan. Vrindavan does not mean a city or town. Sometimes we tend to forget that and we say, oh, I'm in Vrindavan. We're in the association of Vrindavan on the surface maybe. Vrindavan means where everyone is in love, in intense love with Krishna. Not just surface love or sometimes love, but intense. That means complete all the time. Nothing else is there except for loving Krishna. There's no other thought on their mind except for loving Krishna. And consequently whatever achieves Krishna's happiness. Now you have come to Vrindavan. Try to learn how to intensely love Krishna. That is perfection of life. And that is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's contribution. It's incredible how, wherever we're coming from, how by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya and his followers, we're sitting here having the chance to attain this highest perfection by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada. It's just, this is a, the most miraculous of all miracles. It's inconceivable almost. But this is Lord Chaitanya's mercy. So, Vrindavan Dham is Aprakat Dham. Everybody knows what apricot means? I hope I'm saying it a way that you don't mix it up with a fruit. Apricot? What does it mean? Huh? Unmanifest, is that what he said? Yeah. Unmanifest. Prakat means manifest. It appears to be manifest. We're looking at at the beautiful deities of Sri Sri Gornitai, this beautiful temple, hearing the holy names, places of Krishna's pastimes, temples, devotees, residents of the Dham, the cows, the dust of the Dham. They appear, yes, they're revealing according to our surrender. We're getting the chance to, to associate. They're giving this little opportunity. Like a tip of an iceberg. A little drop, you could say. There's an unlimited, ever-increasing ocean there. We just have to become, let's say, eligible to enter in. Desiring to enter in. Maybe we still have a few desires for the the, other, the shore, the material world. But by coming into the association of the Dham, and specifically in the Dham, it doesn't mean that we go, you know, we spend our whole time in Loi Bazaar or in the MVT restaurant or somewhere or another trying to get some, you know, pleasure for our senses. But the essence is that we remember Krishna, we hear and chant, we render service to the Vaishnavas, to the Dham, that we hear and chant about Krishna from the bona fide source. Prabhupada goes on to say, those who are attached to Vishaya, what is Vishaya? Vishaya. There are some islands, anyone from the Philippines? Is the islands are called the Vishayas. And they really are meant for sense gratification. So what is Vishaya? Sense gratification. Those who are attached to Vishaya, sense gratification, they cannot see what is Vrindavan. It's like when Prabhupada came here in 67 with Kirtananandan, Prabhu when he came and he left here as Swami, he said to Prabhupada, why is Vrindavan Prabhupada? It looks so dirty. It looks so dirty. I mean, yeah, with mundane eyes, it looks so dirty, right? It does look dirty. 
so much piles of garbage that Prabhupada said, because your heart is dirty. You have a dirty heart. You're seeing dirty. We see according to our conditioning. We accept and reject even, even statements from Shastra or statements from Srila Prabhupada said, right? Sometimes we may be hearsay, but even then we just take the little one. That we, it may not be in context. We haven't got that big picture of understanding what is relevant necessarily. Because we're seeing through our own conditioning, through the modes of nature which are still covering us. They cannot understand what is Krishna and Radha. Funny Prabhupada puts it that way around. And there's a reason why. Therefore, Naratam Das Thakur sings, and many of you know this, huh? Vishaya Churiya Serase Majiya. No, that's, that's Lochan Das. This is a different song. Vishaya Churiya Kabe Shuddha Habimong Kabe Hamahe Rabo Shri Vrindavan. What does that mean? I'm sure everyone sung that very famous song, Gorango Boloti Habe. What does that line mean? <laughs> yes, one has to become freed of this desire for Vishaya or sense gratification. And the heart becomes purified if one actually wants to enter in to Sri Vrindavan Dham. Vishaya Chadiya means one who detests, detests this material enjoyment. Do we detest it? A little bit. Well, little bit. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Depends where we are and what's going on. And <laughs> Sometimes we, Krishna gives a little mercy sometimes, puts us in a bit of trouble. Huh? And then we start thinking, why? I remember one time I was, I was in Uganda, 1980, alone, uh, trying to preach Krishna conscious that the African boy with me disappeared somewhere and I was left alone in the middle of the jungles of Uganda and there's a long story behind it but boy did I really feel appreciation for the Vaishnava Association in that position. You really felt, you know, oh I just want to be with devotees however difficult it may be, I just want to be with the devotees, whatever they do it's just like We've been, sometimes Krishna puts in that situation where sense gratification, when you get sick sometimes, you feel sense gratification is horrible. The very thought of it is detestable. It's horrible. You don't want to go there ever again. As soon as you're well, of course, it changes usually. But at least at that time, we feel like that. Prabhupada says, they cannot see what is Vrindavan. This is the process. Rupa Raghunatha Pate Haibe Akuti Kabe Hama Bujabase Yugala Piriti We should try to understand Krishna's love with the, we should not try to understand Krishna's love with the gopis all of a sudden. Not all of a sudden. Not like we wake up today. I'm in Raghunuga Bhakti. I'm experiencing bhava. At least up until breakfast time. <laughs> which will be approaching very soon. Don't worry. Sometimes we, it's good that we're hankering for it. But uh, as Rupa Goswami says, you know, enthusiasm, hankering is a very important aspect of advancement in Krishna consciousness, but it has to be tempered with patience. It has to be tempered with intelligence. Enthusiasm doesn't just mean passion. You know, it, it, what does it mean? Enthusiasm. It means our actions are, are with intelligence, proper intelligence, not just acting, you know, wildly, understanding the goal. But, you know, in any activity in life, we may have a goal, 
But we also have to understand the process to reach the goal. Whether it's study, sport, childbirth, whatever it is, there's a process we have to go through. We have to be patient. But we have to go through the process at the same time. We can't get it. There's an interesting word in English, prematurely. You've heard this word? Many times we want this pure love of God prematurely. And it's a very interesting word because if you break it down in another way, it means prema too early, <laughs> prematurely. A very interesting word. Huh? Prema too early. Yes, we want prema. That's the goal of our life. What's the use otherwise, practically? But it's not something you can just happen by doing this and that. It descends as the divine mercy of those who have it. The gopis of Vrindavan, whatever ras it may be. We have to cultivate that mood of total self-surrender. It is very confidential. It is meant for the Paramahamsas to understand. Let us understand Krishna first of all. Well, we have Bhagavad Gita to understand Krishna. Why do we, why Prabhupada says again and again, you have to go through the first nine cantos of Srimad Bhagavatam and understand the, the, the truth about Krishna. Otherwise, we may read. Of course we're going to read. Wonderful. Srila Prabhupada wants us to do that. But to actually digest in a way that is productive, not that we get constipation or diarrhea, but in a way that we actually is appropriate. We get totally nourished and go further forward. We have to go through the nine cantos in their various categories. And especially the first two cantos, Prabhupada said those who are still attached to mundane sex life, practically speaking, we have to remain at the lotus feet of the Lord, which are the first two cantos of the Bhagavatam. Anyway, we were not going to go down that path today. We'll finish this off. Of course, that is the aim, the highest understanding of Krishna. Gopi Bhava Rasamita Dalahari Kalola Magno But not all of a sudden. Try to understand Krishna first. Therefore, Vyasadeva is compiled Srimad Bhagavatam. Just mention. If one tries to understand Krishna from the tenth canto only, some people do. Krishna, we'll think, Prabhupada said, Krishna is like us. Hmm. I'm a young, young boy. Hmm. He's after so many young girls. Hmm. Let us imitate. No, that is not understanding Krishna. Krishna must be understood. And then, if you follow the footsteps of the Acharyas, you will be able to understand what are the loving affairs between Krishna and Radharani. Don't try to understand all of a sudden, like ordinary boy and girl, making their loving affairs, then you will fall down. So this is my request, it's Prabhupada speaking. You have come to Vrindavan. Try to understand what is Vrindavan Dham? What is Radha Krishna? But very cautiously, very carefully, then Krishna will be pleased. And Krishna himself, as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is present here, go through him in this way. Gradually, you will be able to understand. But that is the highest perfection. Some way or other, if you can understand Krishna and Vrindavan are non-different, they are one. That is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's philosophy. As he is worshipable, his dham is also worshipable. We should not commit any offense in the dham. And we should follow the footsteps of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
then we will be favored by the grace of Krishna to understand him and his pastimes with Radharani. So we may ask, we've already mentioned a few things, how to achieve this goal of our lives, Krishna Prema, to enter into those pastimes for the pleasure of Krishna. Not for our own pleasure, but for the pleasure of Krishna. This is the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the mission of all the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, and this is what preaching basically means, isn't it? We as Jeevas, conditioned that we may are, our real constitution is to engage in pure devotional service to Krishna, to the devotees of Krishna. So preaching means to please Krishna, to re reconnect all the Jeevas to Krishna. The more the merrier, the more pleasure it can bring Krishna. This is the mood of a devotee. By, re re by reconnecting or connecting the jiva with Krishna in pure devotion brings Krishna pleasure. And that's the preaching. The pure devotee is always thinking of what will increase Krishna's pleasure. Prime more over and above what will release the living entity from their suffering. But what will bring more pleasure to Krishna? This is Lord Chaitanya's mood. And consequently, in the course of that, of course, it releases the living entities. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in this world for two specific purposes, along with his associates, to taste the nectar of Krishna Prema, the love, in other words, which his devotees are experiencing when they give their heart and soul to please Krishna. They experience love and happiness even greater than Krishna's. Lord Krishna cannot experience that, so he appears in this form of Mahaprabhu to to taste that ecstatic feeling of the gopis and the, the devotees, their love for him. So he came for that reason. And to, along with the performance of congregational chanting of the holy name, which is the primary, the primary process by which this natural love for Krishna will awaken congregational chanting of the holy name of the Lord. Thus, the Lord, along with his associates, spread Krishna consciousness even amongst the untouchables, even amongst the untouchables, practically like many of us, come from that category. And thus the Lord wove a wreath of the holy name and Krishna Prema with which he garlanded the entire material world. And his congregational chanting of the holy name, which Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj describes as the emperor of all sadhana. If the sadhana which we performed does not help us to develop our attraction for chanting, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj says, it is an Im impediment on our path an impediment. It doesn't deserve to be called sadhana. Real sadhana means, he says, that which helps us to develop an attraction for chanting the holy name of Krishna because everything is there in chanting the name. The name, the Lord has invested all of his transcendental energies in the sound vibration of the Maha Mantra. Everything is there, but we're not there. We have to learn the process of associating with the holy name of Krishna. He says, this is the emperor of all sadhana, the chanting or congregational chanting of the holy name, and the only, the only infallible means of success. There is no other means of success, ultimately, or infallible means. There are many other limbs of devotion which are very important in order for us to actually come to really understand the transcendental nature of the Maha Mantra and to really enter into Sankirtan. Sankirtan is not just a bit of fun, a bit of jumping around and having a good time. 
and attracting attention or whatever it may be. That may be there at the childlike stage we're at, but it is a reenactment in one sense. It's the equivalent of the Rasa Leela dance. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Sankirtan, his Prema Sankirtan, is this, practically the same associates are coming in Gaur Leela and they're absorbed in this congregational chanting, experiencing the house of Sri Thakur or on Rathiyatra, which is a very, very significant festival, uh, experiencing the same transcendental reciprocation of loving exchange as takes place in the Rasa Leela. We may not quite be on that platform, so therefore there's a process to follow. Everything in the, in, in, in the Sankirtan movement, at least during Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's move, time, it was not a whimsical exhibition of our conditional tendencies and abilities. We may use those, or they may be used in Krishna service, but ultimately it's not like that. Just like we see the gopis here, the mudras, the ways their faces are, are decorated, the movements of their eyes, the, the, the bracelets on their ankles, uh, necklaces, everything, earrings, everything, just perfectly to bring ever-increasing pleasure to Krishna. This Sanctan movement has the same basic principle. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally, at least in a manifest way, what to speak of internally, but manifest way, he showed that. He organized the Sanctan parties. Everyone was in the right place to create exactly the perfect purpose behind the Sankirtan. It's not just to show how loud you can beat the jumbe. There were no jumbeis then. No comment. Um, but even if you're a drum player, it was the, you had to play exactly the perfect beat according to the mood. Not just according to your mood, but according to the mood of Krishna, the desire of the, the heart beat of the Lord. Everything, Shrub Damodar, there, Vrasyat was seven parties, four chosen by Lord Chaitanya. Each person was chosen by Lord Chaitanya perfectly to be the, the lead singer, the lead dancer, the cartel players, the Madunga players. So there was complete harmony with the, the pleasure of Lord Jagannath in the center. To bring Lord Jagannath back to Vrindavan, that sound which he cannot resist, just like the gopis run madly into the forest when Krishna played his flute, they couldn't resist it. Nothing got in the way. We may have a little bit of a taste like that. I, I think all the devotees, when they hear the kirtan, they run to the kirtan, right? They, they can't, they throw everything down, they run to the kirtan. They put their mobiles down, and they run to the kirtan. They might even turn them off. Wake up! Someone said, Jannard Mahat said, wake up. Yes, we jump into the kirtan, let go of everything, forget everything else and just dance. Chant! Jayad Vedamaj was talking about, well, somebody asked a question about fanatic the other day. Huh? Somebody did, was it? I think it was Jayad Vedamaj in that class. Huh? Fanatic. Well, this is in one sense, I mean, of course there is tempering here. It's not, you don't just dance like a maniac. Maybe in the beginning sometimes that happens, some drunkard comes in. But, you know, we have to understand a little bit. There has to be some knowledge there, too, what we're doing it for. Why are we dancing and chanting? Ultimately, Prabhupada is teaching us how to dance and chant for the pleasure of Krishna. He danced, Prabhupada dances only for that reason, and inspires us to try to do likewise. So there are many different, you could say, guidelines there, which will help us to develop this mood of we're doing it for Krishna's pleasure. We don't know how it pleases Krishna. We learn from those who do. Prabhupada says, the goal of life cannot be achieved unless one practices the process. Now, being merciful upon me, please explain. This isn't Prabhupada saying this. Is, this is actually Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saying this. He's saying this to Ramananda Roy. The goal of life cannot be achieved unless one practices the process. Now, being merciful upon me, please explain that means by which this goal can be attained. Who wants to know what the goal is? Okay, we're running out of time. We're going to leave it there. There's 
I wanted to share many different things from Bhakti Vinod Sakur and from Prabhupada and Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj and different aspects in this regards. But we'll ask if there's any comments on this and keeping to the subject matter if you please can and uh, not sort of ask something uh, from over the other side of the Jamuna or something. Panchagoda Prabhu, you're s I, I'm, I'm so impressed. I mean, I see you every day in the class. I wasn't here yesterday. Pardon? I wasn't here yesterday. No, neither was. I was on my way here and I, 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 I couldn't sleep. I, I was having a sleep problem and I had so much to do and I just couldn't make it. Then it started raining and I just went down, you know. Uh, oh gosh, there's a virus going around. There's a big virus going around in the material world. I mean, there are many viruses going around which are very dangerous. This is, you could say, a health hazard, but there are many more dangerous ones on social media and other places. Be careful. We have to catch the virus of Kirtan, Sankirtan. That's a virus too. Yes? Prabhupada encouraged me that we all together chant the holy name, Sankirtan, in early days, many, many hours, 8, 10, 12 hours, we would be chanting and dancing. It seems that over the years it's minimized, and people like just to watch the Kirtan, you know, they're, they're appreciative and they're positive, but they only participate. And it's difficult to train the mind to actually get over the ego that I can actually chant and dance and be part of it, whether or not the chant or the play or the organ or the cartels. I force myself to get that and be part of it. Now. How do we become more part of the Kirtan instead of just appreciate them externally? Well, you're going to get me going now. <laughs> How do we become more part of it rather than just a spectator? And sometimes we're not even a spectator. We're, you know, I did that this morning. I went on Harry Nam last month. You're asking me to go again? What is this? One hour a week, that's one hour too much. Have you ever noticed though, when you do go on Sankirtan, and now we're talking now on the street or in public or whatever it may be. So, have you ever noticed that when you go, many times after an hour, if you last that long, you're thinking, why don't I do this more often? Have you ever noticed that? Well, you know, you're doing it all the time. Huh? I won't repeat that one. You've got such an amazing sense of humor. Um, has anyone ever experienced that? I mean, you're in, most of you are from India. It may not be the same, but I, I see that wherever I go. That, you know, sometimes I go on my own. I used to go on my own regularly, and I go to Sydney or somewhere. I go on my own sometimes at Harry now. Then gradually people catch on. You know, you see there, if you're happy, you know, one of the things is, probably common to all of us, we want to be happy. Whether it's genuine or conditional, isn't it? It's a common denominator amongst practically every living entity. Even if you are, happen to be in the body of a mosquito, believe it or not, a mosquito wants to be happy. Bear that in mind when you, you know, see a mosquito drinking, drinking. He's hungry, he's thirsty. You know, imagine if you're going to the prasadam room and someone comes in and swats you like this and knocks you flying out of the prasadam room. How would you feel? You wouldn't be very happy. I'm going to get my own back on that one. So they come back at you a hundred times more powerful than before. Anyway, aside from that, people want to be happy. You know, if the Hari Nam Sangatan is like, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. You know, proper, you know, we may not be pure devotees in the mood of the gopis or the Rathiatra of Lord Chaitanya, but it's meant to be joyfully performed to Shanti Chiramanti Cha, even at our stage. Joyful, it was joyful. We didn't just go eight to ten hours and think, my God, this is a drag, and what am I doing here? Right? You wanted to stay longer. You didn't want to stop. You're chanting, even going to bed, in the shower, everywhere, in the toilet, chanting, chanting everywhere, in the kitchen, while we're cleaning the floor. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, na, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, everything. 
in 71, 72, and I don't know, we got into other things and this and that. We got specialized. We got a specialized. But Jiva Goswami, Srila Prabhupada, again and again emphasized, every service must be accompanied with the chanting of the holy name. You think, oh, no, no, I'm doing something else. No, oh, the chanting of the holy name. Otherwise, false ego comes in, this comes in, we forget why we're doing it, etc. Prabhupada writes. The chanting helps us to remind us also. Daily worship also is very essential. Very essential. There's no doubt they go together. We cannot ignore the worship of the Lord. Otherwise, we will not develop this mood of personal relationship with the name, with Krishna. Not just a sing song. And I like it, I don't like it. Who's singing? I like it. It's become a little bit like that now. Who is singing? You know, the melody, the musical instruments, the place. This is external kirtan. It's not internal. It will not, unless the leaders are really advanced, it may not lead to that internalization. And that understanding, that kirtaniya sadahari, that's, isn't that our goal? Don't we say it every day? So what's missing? Is it Trinada peace in China? Tarora peace no, no. Is that missing? Maybe. Prabhu, yesterday I was with Mandakini a program in the VIHE, and uh, uh, Mother Prashanda said that Mandakini in 1971, 71 or 2? 71, wasn't it? 71, Prabhupada came uh, to London. She was serving there, and she said Prabhupada decided that she should marry Ananta Shanti the first Russian devotee. Never asked her. He decided on the plane. I think uh, Sham Sundar and Prabhupada decided on the plane that she would be a good match for Ananta Shanti. Prabhupada said, just came there. What did he say? What did Prabhupada say? No mic. I'm sure she's saying that. No, no, okay, quick with the mic. Quick with the mic. Thank you very much for the class. So, Shiro Mokpat said, Mandaki, uh, with a big smile, would you like to go to Moscow and to marry this boy, uh, Adaltoni, and by the grace of Lord Chitanya, assist the, the mission there in the Soviet Union? That's what Prabhupada said. And what did you say? And, uh, you know, I've been praying to Shishu Vadalong the Nishvara to uh, that Shila Bhagavad would ask something a little difficult. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I ask uh, dear Shishu Vadalong the Nishvara to remind me to say yes. So when the time came, I remember that I, I looked at Shila Bhagavad and I said, Yes, Shri <laughs> Yes. We used to say yes. Do you remember those days? Prabhu, can you do some service? No. <laughs> I'm busy. I got my rounds to chant. I'm chanting 64 rounds today. No time. I didn't sleep last night. Ask somebody else. There was a time when we used to say yes. Now, not blindly, of course. You could say maybe a little blindly. We shouldn't be stupid. But that mood of enthusiasm for service. Enthusiasm. Serving the Vaishnavas. Bhakti Siddhartha Mahath said is the key to developing a taste for chanting the holy name. Service to the Vaishnavas. And uh, to develop a taste. We don't have no taste. We have a taste for something or another. We lost that taste. Not everybody, of course. But the taste hasn't come, we haven't got it. You can't, it's just, what do you say? It's contagious, it's a virus, it's the most powerful thing. It has to be created again, it has to be awoken. So how to do that? We have to do it. But service to the Vaishnava has a powerful effect of evoking the mercy of the holy name. Very important. Mandaki going to Russia. No one was there except for, what was his name? Alexei? Anatoly. 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 Was the only person in any way inclined or had any in, and only a little bit of knowledge about Krishna consciousness given to him personally by Prabhupada. Powerful injection. Mandakini went there, taught him, guided him, and then the whole Russian Yatra 
went through many challenges, but blossomed into tremendous what it is now. Uh, hundreds of thousands of devotees. Phenomenal, phenomenal. With that enthused, just by saying yes, one yes, created such a huge effect. Incredible. That was the mood. Devotees would do anything for Prabhupada, right? We do anything. Keeping Prabhupada's wish in the center, I think we, we have to understand the mission of Srila Prabhupada and become grateful to Srila Prabhupada oh, just all the time. That everything we have is mercy coming through Srila Prabhupada. And keeping that always in the center of our lives, what would Prabhupada want? We're here to not think, oh, I don't feel like it. I don't feel like it. So much of this, what have I got out of it? These type of statements are complete maya. Complete maya. They're the statements of, you know, maybe somebody who's just walked in the door. And if we still have those after 40 years, we're missing something. We're not associating with Srila Prabhupada's mission. Something's missing. Maybe some distant association. So to create that mood of what would Srila Prabhupada want of us, and the spirit of coming together, coming together in Kirtan is the solution to all of the problems which we have to spend countless hours in our minds spinning around. Spinning around. Yes, Prabhu. Need a mic. Raj, thank you for the class, and thank you for the time for speaking. It was outstanding to appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, we're mentioning in the class... Can you put the mic closer? Yes. I can't hear. Our people are saying. Thank you, Raj, for the class. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. Good question. Our apologies. Um, you were mentioning about um, offenses. Now, and we can understand that primarily offenses are dangerous, primarily to the spiritual masters of the problem. Um, and also we can understand that there is no difference between Vrindavan and Navadvi. Why is it that in Navadvi the offenses are reduced to a minimum for a certain reason and in Vrindavan they're not? Your senses? Why the offenses? All the offenses. I thought it said se senses. No, offenses. <laughs> offenses. <laughs> I'm off to Rind I'm off to Mayapur right now. <laughs> Give me a ticket, quick. <laughs> I was thinking of the same thing <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> oh boy. Why is it? Well, this is the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. No doubt about that, that he doesn't consider. But here in Vrindavan um, is something which we were at this program yesterday and I said, what do we chant? And uh, they said, just chant Hare Krishna. I said, okay. We've already chanted. I said, have you chanted Pranams to Prabhupada? Have you chanted Panchatattva Mantra? Maha Mantra? And they said, no, we chant at the beginning. Fine, no problem. But I said, please excuse me. I'm going to chant Prabhupada's Pranams and the Panchatattva first. Fine. You know, it's, we've got to always remember that our, as we've already heard, are we really in Vrindavan? How much we're in Vrindavan? That's another thing. Um, it's a very confidential dham. Mayapur is Odarya dham, is very merciful, as we know. We're not on the level of Madhurya. We need Odarya. We need that mercy. Absolutely. But that can also be experienced here in Vrindavan. Srila Prabhupada is in store Gorni Tide, right here in the temple. We can't approach Krishna Balaram or Radha Shamsundar without their going through Gornitai. We can't chant the holy name. We can, but how do we become free of offenses? Many times Srila Prabhupada said, essentially, we have to chant the name Gor Nityananda or Gornitai or Panchatattva Mahamantra. We have to go through the right means. Yes, it's more intense here in Vrindavan. There's no doubt about it. And there's no doubt about it. We have to be more careful. Generally, Prabhupada said, and I mean, it's written anyway, that unless one is, you know, a little bit advanced in spiritual life, spending too much time in Vrindavan is very risky. Very risky. 
But if you're engaged in service, bona fide service, then you're in a, it's like when we're chanting Hare Krishna. If we're always chanting Hare Krishna, we can't chant anything else, at least externally. It's Kali Yuga. So at least externally, we should avoid anything other than devotional service when we're in Vrindavan. As much as we can. It's a great reminder. We need both. We need both the Adharya mood, that merciful mood. But we shouldn't take that for granted either and think, I could go to Mayapur and do any damn thing I like and I'm okay. I chat my rounds and go to class sometimes. And then I could do anything I like. It doesn't work like that either. We have to take the mercy. The mercy is there to unqualified personalities are being given the opportunity. We, we shouldn't take advantage of it either. Thinking, therefore, I don't get a reaction for this, so what, so what? It doesn't work like you'll never develop love of Krishna like that. We remain in that frame of mind for a long time. But here in Vrindavan, it's much clearer, isn't it? It's right on the surface. We're always thinking, oh boy, I better be careful, I better be careful, I better be careful. Is it? More so. We do forget, we do, go, we do slip, but it's more on the surface. And we're reminded of it. It's there all over. We sometimes, you know, get carried away. Krishna tests us. The, 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 you know, the ritual wallet demands twice the normal price and we get uptight. And, you know, then how do you feel afterwards? You feel awful, right? Isn't it? I had that the other day. I gave a donation to one guy and I didn't give it to the other. I didn't have any money in my pocket. And he got really upset and I kind of said, just close the door. And I, you know, I was trying to get in the taxi. Uh, it was like, and I felt really bad afterwards in one sense. You know, I felt like I'd offended a resident of, of Vrindavan, you know. But that is a, a good thing in one sense. That is purifying. When you feel bad about it, that is called anutapa. It means a fever in your heart. It burns away that tendency to commit offenses to the Dham. You become a feeling of deep repentance. So in Vrindavan is a great place to go that step. There's another step on devotional service. This important step of feeling not just sorry Prabhu, but it's in your heart. Your heart is burning. <sighs> Painfully burning. Just like the gopis were feeling painful in their heart. What happened? Why did Krishna leave us? And go alone. What was it? You know, they're feeling pur burning in their hearts. So that repentant feeling at our stage of devotional service is very on the surface right here in Vrindavan Dham. If you're fortunate, if we're ready, this Krishna gives us this chance. If we don't take advantage, we're stuck. Or we're kicked out, whatever it may be. We'll lose whatever good fortune we may have, practically. So this is a great thing when we realize that. And we do make mistakes. We may make an offense, but how do you feel about it? You feel awful, right? You don't feel good. At least that's the idea. And that will purify us, help to bring us further on the path. And we take shelter of Gornitai and Srila Prabhupada and chant Hare Krishna and come together and dance and chant as much as we can. This is the secret of coming together with devotees and chanting. In the association of devotees, keep that association. Prabhupada's association will protect us in all ways. In the association of devotees, these, this can be burned up. So we need both both the Odario of Navadweep and the Dham here. Prabhupada brought us to Navadweep, then he brought us here, both. We'd always start in Mayapur and come here, wasn't it? In the 70s, always. Mayapur, Vrindavan, always. Pray to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates. You get a lot of purification there too, preparing us then to be a little more qualified to really serve the Dham in a better form frame of consciousness. But we're following Prabhupada, so if we're following Sri Prabhupada's instructions, coming here, gathering here, we may make mistakes, but Prabhupada is our loving father, guiding us, revealing our what we should do when we make mistakes, etc. Be humble, tolerant, respectful to others, and eventually Kirtaniya Sadahari. So practice it when you go back home or wherever you're from. More Kirtan more chanting, more service to Vaishnavas. Even if there's some mistakes, just keep chanting, chanting and serving. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Sri Grantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai
Shri Shri Gornitai Krishna Balaram Radha Shama Sundar Ki Jai Shri Vindavan Dham Ki Jai Gaur Premanandi Haribo Om Shri Gaur Premanandi Haribo